Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. This session we'll be looking at the torso. It's important to model the torso and get that right first before you add the arms and legs. If you try and adapt the shape afterwards, it can be very awkward with the arms and legs in the way. I'll be talking a bit about the torso shape and how you can get that just right so it looks a bit more lifelike. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course, which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with textures, rigging and animation ready for a game engine. Okay, so here's where we got to last time. So let's work on the body. I'm in isolation mode at the moment. So I'll press forward slash to come out of that and we can see my background image once again. We'll come to front view with one on my numpad and let's just zoom out and we want a cube in here. So shift right click, shift A to add mesh and cube. I'll scale that down. So it's about there and press control two to add two subdivisions with a subdivision surface modifier. Now again, we want to mirror this. So we'll press N on my keyboard, go to the edit menu and auto mirror. So if I go into edit mode now, you can see the mirrors there and it's here as well, but it is below the subdivision surface modifier. That's not good practice. Always have your mirror first. So it mirrors across to the other side, then it subdivides it. Otherwise you might get a line down the middle. Okay, so we need to add a few loop cuts and edit our shape. Before we do that, it will be helpful to have a side image as well. So I'll just position this first. So into object mode, three to go to side view and G to grab and put it in the middle there. In fact, what would be even better, if I go to item at the top here, let's click and drag on the X and Y and press zero for those. So it's right in the center. I found a handy side view of a Funko Pop just by typing in Funko Pop side view into Google. So you can find something similar and we only need this really just to see the thickness of our body. So let's just click and drag that in. It does make it that little bit easier. Okay, and with this selected, I can press Alt R and Alt G to remove any grabbing or rotation. I'll press R X 90 to rotate around the X axis, R Z, I think it's minus 90 to go front forwards, yep. And three to go to side view. Let's move this into position and scale it as necessary. Let's get a wireframe for that. So probably around there. Let's click on our cube again then. Zoom into this slightly and scale in the Y so we've got the right sort of shape. And it's slightly forward a little bit more, isn't it? There we go. I'll move in a bit closer on this. Tab to go into edit mode and control R to do a loop cut for the arm hole. Let's just look at that from around the front and I'll do control R, a loop cut around here as well. Let's just go back to solid mode and see what we're looking like. I'm going to select this edge here and here so I can press S then Y and scale it in so we've got more of a spherical shape. And this will be the cutout for the arm. I'll do that now in fact. Three to go to face mode, select that face and press delete and then press faces. And we'll work on the arm next time, but it's a good idea to get the torso in position before you start working on the arms. Otherwise the arms kind of get in the way. Let's go to side view again. I'm going to press control R and do a loop cut around the middle here. And I'm going to scale that in the Y and bring that forward. So he's got a slight curve like this. You can't see it so much on this model, but just trust me, a curve like that will help you. I'm going to press one and go to vertex mode and just grab these and pull these in. In fact, X-ray mode is going to help me here probably as well, isn't it? Pull these in here. So there's a sort of slight curve going around here, maybe a little bit more. This is where a tiny touch of editing will help us. And these ones will come in a bit more as well, somewhere around there. So we've got this sort of bean shape for the body, perhaps even a bit more in there. So it's just a little bit of shape. It's quite important that you don't have it just completely flat. It just doesn't look as real and it looks lifeless. The other thing we need to do, if I just come around to the side, make sure I'm selecting the right vertices, is these four, back to side view, and bring that backwards slightly. The arm tends to sort of be in line with the back, and then we've got this chest sticking out. Makes more sense that way. I'll just bring this down a touch as well. And I'll just move this one up so it's level, so the arm's coming out of there. And just a tiny bit of editing here. So we've got the right sort of armhole there. So have a look at my sort of shape and try and mimic that as best you can. If you've got a side view that's better than this one, then it might help you a bit more. Now let's go around to front view and start editing our shape a bit more. So we can be a bit more precise here because this is the actual Deadpool character that we're trying to mimic. 
So probably about there for the arms. In with the waist, I'll bring this down so it can be in line with the waist and then we can come in a bit more there. And remember you're over exaggerating slightly because it is a subdivision surface, so it does sort of pull in slightly. I'll bring this one down and bring this in so it's sort of like the groin there. Even that out slightly. And this one slightly as well. You might find that another loop cut round here is helpful. It depends how detailed you want to be with your character. I imagine you'll probably want to have another loop cut round there. Okay, good look around. Let's go to solid mode. Let's come out of x-ray mode and have a good look around. Now again, it depends on the detail level, but I think it's nice to have another loop cut around here and here, and then perhaps bring this in just a touch. So I can press GG to edge slide that in, just to give it a touch more curvature. So down here, GG. It's very minimal, but that will help us. Then we've got the head part here. Let's isolate the model, and we can just choose these two. So face mode with three, select these two, E to extrude and pull it up. I'm gonna scale those in and go to front view again and out of isolation mode so I can see my shape. Front view wireframe for this, I think. Yep, we're gonna to have to edit the shape a fair bit. So I'll go to two for edge mode, select this edge loop coming around here. Nope, can't seem to select it. Let's go across to the on cage option. That will help us a little bit. And of course it's going into a pole. I was trying to alt left click and hoping to select the whole loop cut, but it's a pole there, isn't there? So I'll have to just go around pressing shift. And then let's go to front view again and scale those in. Now scaling is gonna seem a little bit weird here because it's scaling just this section because it's mirrored to the other side. So you can actually press G then X and grab it inwards. Somewhere around there, I think. Now we've got a slope downwards, so we might need another loop cut down here. So control R, another loop cut down there, and then we can grab this one. In fact, I'll go to vertex mode for that. Grab these and, and pull them up slightly to there. These can come out a bit more now. There we go. Let's take a look at that in solid mode. So out of X-ray mode into solid mode. It's looking very weird because that's wireframe without X-ray. So I think that might be a bug, but I'm not sure. Let's go back to solid mode there. Oh, and we need to bring the neck back a touch. So let's come in here, select these and this side view, G to grab, and the neck is more sort of towards the back like this. And let's pull this front section here outwards. Actually to about there, that's fine, that's great. And come out to there. It might be getting a touch detailed, but I'm gonna do a loop cut around here and around here. So after making those loop cuts, I'll just move everything back into position neck again at the back, but it just gives me a few more verts to play with and position. And you can see why I'm doing just the torso at the moment, trying to get that right before doing any of the arm work, because having an arm sticking out here could be quite a pain. So just some minor adjustments there, back to solid mode and see what that looks like. That's looking okay, isn't it? I think maybe a little bit more from the back here, G then Y. I'm going to do one more loop cut around the neck just to make sure these come down that little bit more. Do you see them jump down slightly there? So you can see that loop cut around there. I can scale that in a little bit as well. We don't really have to worry too much about the neck. I'm just worried about these verts just in here. Okay, so that's the torso. The other sections are fairly simple once you've got that torso in. Let's go to solid mode and I'll hide my reference images, so H to hide, just so you can see the shape. I can probably bring these in a bit more as well, GG, to edge slide those across, and just even these out slightly. There we go. Nice simple torso, ready for the other parts. It may be a touch small, but we'll figure that out when we add the legs and arms in as well. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.